G'day punters, welcome back to the MacBet Early Move, the Queensland Racing Show where we preview a feature race in Brisbane on Saturday. John McLeod joins me. John, how are you going? Hey James, good, good mate. It's, um, it's pretty warm actually, I've got this jumper on most of the days. I pull this jumper out, it's my work jumper sort of thing, so I think everyone must be sick of seeing this. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, yeah, absolutely. That's good. Yeah, it's good. It's good it's warming up a bit. I'm just going to bolt up to Double Island for the weekend, actually. Just got to that nice little temperature where I'm uh, ready to get back and get, get on the beach. So <laughs> that should be yeah. pretty good. Um, how are you finding things out of lockdown? We're back at the track, um, back watching the yard. I'm a lot happier uh, to be back, but uh, I stuffed up on Wednesday. I um, I wasn't used to it and I forgot to actually transfer my yard stuff over um, onto my laptop and completely forgot about it. So I had to do it by you know, manual and, uh, and actually just talk, talk everyone through it is what I was thinking. But um, it's funny how you, uh, it doesn't take long for you to just forget one or two things, what you've got to do. And I left home, got out of the track. I didn't even realise until I walked out to have a look at the horses that I forgot to put it on there. So, <laughs> yeah, Might as well so left, we, left the laptop at home. You probably feel a bit naked without it, to be honest. Well, I was. I was, sort of, I, I was definitely. It was, it, was, uh, it was sort of not done. It wasn't really the laptop. The laptop was there, but I never yeah. had the actual info on the laptop. Program. So, yeah, so I was sort of, uh, I had all the tools, but not the gun. And <laughs> <laughs> the, bu the bullets and no gun. Yeah, that's right. No, ex yeah. no excuses now. You've had your had your little warm up run, so good to see us out of lockdown and just give it strength that uh, we don't go back in. As far as lockdown goes, results wise, not the not the best time to be sitting at home watching the races. We had a couple of um, tough sort of weeks. What do we do? We sort of knocked off we've knocked off sixteen units um, this month so far. Last week lost seven units, twenty one percent. Been a little bit unlucky, I'd say. I think there's been a couple been backed in and just not quite, just not quite delivering. A couple of disappointing runners, really. Yeah, we just got to you know pull our finger out this month. We you know we've been going pretty good. You know, yeah. the last six we had to hit a little hurdle, but I just hope the hurdle's only small and we can yeah. we can bounce back sort of thing. You know, it's not uh, it's not something to to really worry about at the moment. It's sort of uh, we can we have turned it around quite quickly. We you know leave it on Wednesday on yesterday if we. Uh, if uh, one of those horses was able to win, what was it called? The thing of Tregaze, if it was able to win, we would have had a nice day yesterday. Yeah. But uh, yeah. it went poor. Um, it went terrible. It, uh, it did come out slow. Yeah. And you had to push hard. And it's a funny type of looking horse. It looks like an 800 meter horse. You know? Okay. And, uh, and I was very aware of what it looked like as I, I seen it at Caloundra and I bet against it because it, it just looked new in the yard. And I thought it was going to take a lot of improvement out of the yard. but you know, some horses that do that have got a lot of condition on them that race good. They take one or two runs to get over that. You know, they, they just, and that possibly, you know, might have happened with this one. You know, I'm not to say that you can rush in next time, but, you know, he's got the ability. It's just, he might have um, just that hurt him a bit that first run and he might take one or two runs to get uh, to come good again. That was uh, quackery. So it flopped out of the gates, did a bit of work early. Do you think if he got the jump, we, it would have been winning or it seemed pretty disappointing no. regardless? Yeah, I don't think it would have won even if it jumped. He sort of had to work it because it was gone too too quickly. Yeah. And, but you know, you know, there's a few things that I like to watch with horses second up and uh, he didn't do that with this horse or not that I'm aware of. Um, but, uh, you know, it's something when you after the race you sort of say well that's the reason why it went no good and um, you know I'm leaning towards what I usually usually think of you know you know it's only it's probably 50 50 percent of the time that it um, it happens it, you know sometimes they go forward so other times they they really you know deteriorate their you know their form deteriorates so this is one time that it uh, did go backwards and probably just got to wait for one or two more runs or if he gives it about a 30 day break or, or even more and then brings it back, it'll probably be okay. Yeah, and he trains the favourites in uh, race seven at Eagle Farm on Saturday as well, which is the race we'll be previewing here. Um, the rail's currently in the five metre position. Tracks are good for. How are you going to play this one on Saturday? It's very interesting. Um, you know, around this rail position, 
and most of the you know a lot of the days have been you know more than more than three to four off the fence you know it was more five off the fence so that probably around that 10 meter range even nine to ten um to nine to ten meter rail uh, position um that's the, that's the spot to be but we seen in it you know a couple of weeks ago it was in the three meter range and they only got away about two to three off that's all they needed to to do and um and they raced on the pace and they went all right. You know, they raced pretty good. The back markers found it a bit hard to get on. So it's a really interesting rail position, this one. Um, I, um, you know, I'm not really going into the meeting with a real firm opinion. I'm just going to play it by ear and just oh. um, watch and learn. And, you know, that's the beauty of Eagle Farm that I like is that you can, um, you, know, you, you know, you can't sort of say, okay, this is going to happen. And everyone knows it and they all charge in and they go berserk on the ones mm. that you want to be on. And then all of a sudden you miss the boat and you sort of start backing other horses that are getting to the right value. But, but not really. You can't win. Yeah, you know, okay. So with this track, you can't bet too early. You've got to wait and just see what goes on, unless there's something ridiculous. Yep. Um, you has got to wait to see what's happening and then you know it and then you find the right horse and then you bet accordingly. So... That, that's the beauty of this track for sure and let's see uh the beauty of the whatsapp late mail that everyone gets uh at macbet.com.au weekly and monthly subscribers uh get access to all southeast queensland meetings we've got you guys in the yard on uh most days and yeah just providing updates based on the the track conditions yeah the, the prices of each runner and um how they look in the yard and of course yeah you're sort of yeah. making adjustments as you go yeah, we've got two people on both courses this, this weekend. Brad and, um, and Brody will be down at the Gold Coast and, and Tom and I will be in, in Brisbane. So, um, you know, it's, it's good to have a couple of heads thinking about it, you know, instead of just one person just out there. And, you know, if he starts getting on a, you know, a, a tangent with saying that the leaders are winning, then the other bloke can say, you know, I don't know about that. You know, so it's good to get two people's, you know, head into it to try mm. and talk about it and, uh, and discuss it and, you uh, you know, it's a hell of a lot better to do that than just be a one-man band. You know, yep. you can be right. You know, you can be put off sometimes, but, you know, if you're confident in your own abilities, you should be able to listen to what others have got to say and then say, yeah, he's right, or maybe he's not. You know, you've got, just got to keep your mind open and, um, and, uh, and make your own decisions at the end of it and, you know, die by the sword of your own opinion, but listen. <laughs> <laughs> At least you've got uh, devil's advocate there, and if you both agree and you stuff it up, it's it's on the both. You're not well, just that's right. Then you sort of yeah, then you just sort of hoist the white flag and you sort of say, <laughs> "Oh shit, up, Bill, what's going on?" <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll take an early look at uh, race seven at Eagle Farm over the 18, 25 meter um, distance. There, it's a benchmark 75 handicap. Your favourite champagne auntie, $2.70. Spanish point, $6. ELO is sevens. Uh, reluctant, $8.50. Predictable miss, 13. Divide 11, 14. Magic conqueror, 15. And $15 and better the rest. Let's uh, start with your top pick, champagne auntie. Um, yeah, currently $2.70. Pretty much got it around that mark, unless a horse like Naomi doesn't go forward. Now, um, Burns on it, the horse can pull. Now, Wally usually wants to grab hold and take a sit. Um, so that's the question mark. If Wally says go go back and ride it quiet, well, then I think Champagne and Andy will win. If Naomi, you know, Burn takes his, you know, he's given um, his own, you know, up to his own device, well, then he's usually a bloke from a bad gate not to give away, you know, just go back and ride quiet. He usually goes forward and this horse has sat second before a couple of starts ago and he won. I think it might have been three or four starts ago and he won. We're sitting second now. I think that's what Burn will do unless Wallace says go back. So if he goes forward, well, then Champagne Arnie's going to have to work a bit and then all of a sudden the 270 is, you know, about his price a bit skinny. Yep. If Naomi goes back, well then Champagne party the two seven is is good odds. Okay. So it's, it's interesting. You got a couple of others in the mix as well. Uh, Spanish Point and Divine Eleven there in for second and third. Are they sort of a chance of maybe knocking it off? 
Yeah, well, the vinyl Evans an interesting horse that um, he's ridden by Michael Carl, you know, from this bad gate. Now, he's another one, just because Carl's on it, I think he'll ride it quieter. He, he's sort of coming up to, to sit midfield the other day and then all of a sudden he was wide and went forward around the second. Now, I think um, he'll be, knowing Michael, he, he's sort of a bit more of a quiet jockey. He wants yep. to let horses be where they want it to be. And, He's probably going to ride it a bit quiet. Now, if he does that, he could be in trouble. Um, but he did go good the other day. He worked and uh, and he fought on quite well. And admittedly, in a worse um, field than this. Yep. But, you know, he's going okay, that horse. If he has a bit of luck early and sneaks in somewhere, he's definitely got a chance. And um, Spanish Point, he did... I didn't know what to think about him the other day at um, Eagle Farm in the midweeks. He found the right race. He was going to be in the right position. He landed where I thought he'd be, and he was strong. You know, he, he I think he, he, he fought off um, Smart Meteor, who is, you know, goes okay. He's not really a Saturday quality horse, Smart Meteor, but he, he ran good sectional Spanish point, and he should be able to get over into about third or fourth spot and, and, um, and you know, just getting the perfect run, whereas yep. these other ones just might be a little bit, um, you know, in a bit awkward positions. Okay, and ELO fourth pick there currently six dollars fifty. Yeah, he's um he's trained by um Desley Forster, which is um you know she's flying. The horses are going good. She's you know she doesn't have the, a real lot of quality there, but geez, they race well and they look good in the yard. And you know she's got an awkward gait. This one, um, you know, burns on this one. Uh, well, burns on both these things. Naomi end. ELO at the moment. So if that really means possibly that one's you know going to be scratched, and I hope it's Naomi. So it's going to be interesting. If Naomi scratches, well then um, that's going to help the fave. And yep. ELO is, you know, in an awkward position. You know, it's burn again, but he's drawn outside of um, Champagne Arty this time. So it's going to need a bit of luck and you know, pretty much a miracle, you know, especially to take 650. That seems short enough for mine, but you know, I did notice that he'd he'd um, he'd been on two horses, and it's just a matter of which one scratches. I just hope it's Naomi. It's interesting. Yeah, it looks like um, it'll be a really good race. So, as it stands, Champagne Auntie uh, top tip and Divine Eleven probably just a touch of value at the seventeen dollars currently. But as far as betting goes, I think uh, sounds like you're just waiting out till Saturday. Well, waiting for Saturday or waiting for a scratchy. Yeah, so <laughs> comes first. Be, yeah. Yeah, but it's going to be interesting because you know it's, it, there won't be that much of a difference in the market if the toppy comes out because it's about sixteen or twenty dollars. Mm. Whereas if ELO comes out, it's six fifty, and you're going to hurt. It's going to be hurting you a little bit. You know, it's going to shorten up Champagne Arnie, and really, it's not going to make any difference to Champagne Arnie because he's drawn outside of it. So he's still she's still in trouble. So it's really dependent on the toppy. Toppy. Is the big, big um, play in this race of just knowing what he's going to do on it or if it's scratched. Very interesting. Well, we'll all keep our eyes on uh, Naomi there. Um, before I let you go, John, quick comments. The uh, the Mexican boys jumping the border, betting down south in New South Wales. They've they've been all going all right. Uh, is that something you think we're going to continue doing? Yeah, I think so. It, uh, like last Saturday, it was very like because I was home, I was watching what he, what they were doing and. Geez, they're unlucky. They yeah. tip you ten, eleven dollar shots that run second and like a lot of seconds. You know, <laughs> like a yeah, lot. Yeah, it was just <laughs> incredible. And you know, and they tipped one, you know, that one at ten or eleven dollars as yep. well. So I thought, geez, they're in for a day here. And then all mm. of a sudden they just uh, they struggled with seconds after that. So they went, you know, they're going okay. I think they I'm not sure how they went on um, Wednesday. I know they tipped one earlier and then the yeah. one got and then they got beat later. So I don't know where there wasn't wouldn't have been much in it on Wednesday. I don't it was think. A, yeah, small win on Wednesday. They ran the Quinella in race three. I tweeted out race four, but I meant race three. And then that uh I think it might have been race six, they were unplaced. But yeah, small win there and would have been a small lose Saturday and then a win at Randwick. So I think they're going uh okay overall. I'll start tweeting out some results for that as well once we get a few meetings under our belt. But um yeah, pretty exciting stuff and just feels unusual to be betting down south. <laughs> well, it was, busy. Really? it was damn busy on Saturday. I know I was going from the Gold Coast to Brisbane over to Sydney and yeah. had a look. And, you There's know, something. 
The sun has been racing. I don't bet on the south too much, but I was I was throwing something on, you know, the horses in the races and looking at horses, what you know, the favourites, what they didn't like, and then trying to back a few, even the ones that that um, they didn't put units on. And if they were good odds going on their prices, I was happy to throw something on it, and they they actually got away with something. So hey. it, yeah, it was it was nice sort of thing, even though. They uh, they lost on the units. So I was able to win because of, you know they were potting a few favourites that uh, that got beaten and were able to find a few or well, some of the roughies that they didn't put units on. They had it around the market or if not shorter, so it was good. We'll tell John Walter to watch out. John McLeod's betting down south. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, we sort of uh, well we might even finish up in Melbourne eventually. <laughs> we might even make a reappearance in Hong Kong in a year or so. So. We, uh, it looks, it'll be, it's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Last time we did this type of thing, we had the wrong people. Yep. And, uh, but now we seem to, you know, we've got the right people on board. And um, it's, uh, it's a bit exciting to do this sort of thing. And uh, so we'll see what happens. For sure. Yeah, very exciting. And everyone just keep an eye out on our Twitter at MacBet Tips or sign up to our email updates on our website. We'll keep you posted with all of our new uh, expansions or new products uh, coming up. So, uh, John, thanks for the chat and good luck this weekend. Thank you, James. Good luck, guys. Thanks.